He's doing well, very well. Take your time, lad. Don't try to hurry your strokes. You have a fine son, Gert. I... It's good of you to teach him so many things, sir. He learns quickly. Every day he learns something new. <laughs> Five times there and back. Were you watching, father? Aye, well done, lad. Next time, you'll swim with a pack on your shoulders, and I'll show you how to keep it dry. Sir Ivanhoe, I'm glad that you are pleased. But what good are all these things you've t taught me, unless I can serve you in earnest? When will you let my father forge a proper sword for me? Well, time enough for that, lad. Before you wear a man's sword, you must grow a little more. Learn to accept discipline without question. That's Sir Waterman's land beyond the road. That must be some of his men. They seem to be in a hurry. Road, sir? No, we saw no one. Up there! 
up your arms on the franchise! Put up your arms, I say! It's all right, all right, all right. Oh, Bud, I thought your father ordered you to stay with the pack horse. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't help myself. Is he badly hurt? It's a wonder he had the strength to run at all. Look at this. And his back. Barbaric. I don't wonder you ran away from Sir Waldemar. I, I was whipping boy to Harold and, and Master Philip of Wexford. Philip? Is he the grandson of Sir Baldwin of Wexford? Uh, I said the same. He's a decent lad, Philip is. When he did wrong, I, I had to be punished for it. He, he'd be sorry, truly sorry. Like as if the lash hurt him as much as it did me. But Harold? He'd do wrong on purpose just to see me whipped. He knew he couldn't be punished be because he was of noble blood. Sir Baldwin of Wexford, isn't he your old friend, sir? Aye, indeed, he trained me for my knighthood. And I was with his son, Sir James, Philip's father, when he died in battle in the Holy Land. Why Sir Baldwin should give his grandson into the keeping of Sir Waldemar, I can't imagine. But I mean to find out, Gerth. We'll ride to Wexford Castle. Come on, man. Up. Look well, Sir Baldwin. The reward of being whipping boy in the house of Waldemar. You poor lad. Come with me. I will bind your wounds. Sir Baldwin, I have honored you all my life, as I have honored my own father. Your son James and I were friends as children, friends as men and comrades in the Crusades. I am eager now to serve you and James's widow, the Lady Eleanor. But there are matters I don't understand. Will you answer me one question? Your grandson, Philip. Why have you given him into the keeping of Sir Waldemar? A savage and treacherous noble who you, or you must know, plots to help Prince John steal Richard's crown. Sir Waldemar is training Philip in the knightly arts. Knightly arts? He will brutalize the boy. You're the man who taught me the meaning of freedom, of chivalry, who reared me to love God and respect the valiant Richard, who encouraged me to bear arms in the Holy Crusades. What has happened to you, Sir Baldwin? Is it such a crime to want peace in my old age? For myself and my loved ones? I have three other grandsons to think of besides Philip, and granddaughters too. When the whole kingdom is divided, and some of the nobles are for Prince John, the others for King Richard, is it so very wrong to try to remain neutral, to consider the safety of my family? So Philip is, in fact, Sir Waldemar's hostage. Yes, and his guarantee that I should not interfere with his treatment of the villagers and his schemes to annex the farmlands and small estates for miles around. But don't you see you're his accomplice? When he has taken all the smaller estates, he will take Wexford. What else could I do? My own son is dead, and I am too old to fight. Then let me help. First, we must free Philip. But how? If we attack Sir Waldemar, he will not hesitate to take my grandson's life. And Prince John will send men to aid his defense. By your leave, sirs, there's another way. Sir Waldemar will be looking for a new whipping boy. Could it not be me? Once inside the castle, I could get word to you. In this way, I could serve you in earnest, Sir Ivanhoe. And it is a task no grown-up could do. No, I will not hear of it. You're about the same age as my Philip. I would not like to see you hurt. My Lady Eleanor, I would like to help bring your son home. Being a whipping boy cannot be so bad. Before Sir Ivanhoe freed us, we were serfs. I used to get plenty of beatings then. Didn't I, Father? It is the only way, my lady. Go 
are you? Whose collar do you wear? We wear no man's collars, sir. We are freedmen. We want to hire out our labor. I'm a blacksmith. We have our own smith. But uh, we may have something for the lad. Thank you, sir. Uh, what would he be doing and how much would it pay? He'd be a companion and playmate to two boys of noble birth, about his own age. Be well dressed and fed. And get ten shillings a year beside. Excellent, sir. What do you say, Bart? Mm. It sounds very nice indeed. That settled them. Come with me, boy. Uh, just one thing, Bailiff. Yes? Oh, Bart and I are very close. We, we haven't got any other kin except my poor old father. I've got to come and see the lad. Well, you may come the last Sunday of each month. I must see him every day, sir. Otherwise, I'm afraid I, I shall have to decline your fine offer. Every day? That's impossible. Good day, sir. Very well, then. You may come every day. And the grandfather? He may come with you. Now, Bart, you must go with the bailiff and be a good boy and do what you're told. Yes, father. Bye, son. Bye, father. Gentlemen, this is the new boy, Bart. This is Master Harold, Sir Waldemar's son. He doesn't look strong enough to be a whipping boy, but we'll soon see. And this is Master Philip, son of Sir Baldwin of Wexford. Hello, Bart. I hope he's not a sniveller like the last one. He bawled before you even touched him. You must remember, Bart, the penalty for striking a noble is death. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Now, wasn't that mischievous of me? Don't you think I ought to be punished for that? Whipped, perhaps? Now, Master Hell. You mean I am not to be whipped? Well, now, we must really have some fun. What shall I break next? No, Master Hell. You shall be whipped. Good. Don't hold back, then. Let's see how loudly this one can howl. You are low and vile. And one of these days, I warn you... Master Philip, must I remind you Sir Waldemar may beat you himself, if he wills it. Don't take any notice of Philip. Get on with your work. to visit me every day. Well, you can't go without asking me. Leave him alone, you coward. You call me a coward? That I do. You can put on a brave show because Bart gets beaten for your mischief. Don't be a fool. The old man's a commoner. He wouldn't be permitted to beat me. Coward, coward. <laughs> you challenge me to combat? No, Harold, I'm not such an ass. The guards would hear us and go running to tell your father. Very well, then. You choose the place and the weapons. Behind a blacksmith, with these. Bare fists, like commoners. There, I knew it. You're afraid. That's not true. What time? High noon tomorrow. Very well, then. I'll be there. Not with a man at arms. Alone. Just the three of us. Bart will referee. You may go now, Bart. Thank you, sir. Who is that? Only the new whipping boy, Father. Philip, you may withdraw. I wish to speak with my son. Of course, sir. Well, Bailiff, you have excelled yourself. I know that boy. <laughs> he and his father serve Sir Ivanhoe, our brotherhood! The father is here now. I'll put them both in chains. No, no. <laughs> Was there ever such a simpleton? Let them be. They will do nothing without Ivanhoe. 
We'll wait, and you'll see. He will deliver himself. In the meantime, Harold, try and find out what they're plotting. Good news, Father. Quickly, before someone comes. Harold will meet Philip behind the blacksmiths at high noon. There'll be no guards about them. Good. Will you be there? Will you come for us? Oh, we'll be there, never fear. Ivanhoe will be disguised as your grandfather. Come, I'll show you where the blacksmith is now. Right. Oh, take it away, I'm not hungry. Has the thought of that poor boy robbed you of your appetite? Be silent, Blanche. I shall not be silent. I help to bring your son and your son's sons into this world. I have the right to speak my mind. Do you think I am not pained by the thought of that poor boy's suffering? Aye, my lord. I've seen you sitting here all day with a doleful countenance. There is nothing else I can do. Sir Ivanhoe has said that this is the only plan that could succeed. Sir Ivanhoe is a brave knight and a worthy knight. I can remember when he came to you for direction in the art of knighthood. But this is our fight. You do not understand these things, Blanche. So every man says when he cannot answer a woman's logic. I know nothing of the art of war, my lord. But I know that if your son were here, that boy who died fighting a holy war, he would ride out with Sir Ivanhoe. He looks to his father to stand forth in his place. Oh, but I am an old man. Fiddlesticks. My sword has lost its cunning. I would be a hindrance to Sir Ivanhoe. No man fighting for his hearth and home could ever be a hindrance. Would you have Master Philip learn that the head of his family sat here sighing while another fought for him? But I have the Lady Eleanor and my other grandchildren to protect. Of what avail would it be to them if I were to go out there and die? Sir Ivanhoe had no thought of death or failure when he rode out from our gates. There was hope in his eyes and steadfastness in his manner. Yes, I'm beginning to think he has less dangers to face than I have here with a dragon of a woman to bait me. Still, I can see you are determined to force some plan upon me. What is it? It is said that Sir Waldemar means to seize the farms and small estates, and that one day Wexford will have to fight an enemy grown fat on the storehouses of others. I fear that is true. My lord. Ride out now with the freemen and the small landowners and put an end to this danger that confronts us all. But they are not trained fighting men. They live for peace. Remember, my lord, your son loved peace. He fought and died for it. You are right. You are right. I'll leave at once. Tell the Lady Eleanor that when I return, I shall bring my grandson with me. God be with you, my lord. They're in. Shall we raise the drawbridge? No. Wait till they're in the smithy. Fight, you coward! Fight! You keep watch this side, Gunner. Aye, sir. You boys stay here. Bailiff, raise the drawbridge. Thank <laughs> you. 
swim guard. Aye, sir. They're escaping! Stop them! Lower the bridge! Take a good look, Sir Waldemar. Sir Baldwin of Wexford and all your other neighbors, large and small, are now united. Together they make a fine, strong force, don't you think? They will not yield to you again. Harm one, and you harm them all. This is your handiwork, Sir Ivanhoe. I will remember this. Good. Remember, too, that this is still King Richard's realm, and all men are entitled to justice. Remember. Or you may be sure that I will remind you. You have restored my grandson to me, Sir Ivanhoe, and regained freedom for all of us. How can we ever repay you? by guarding that freedom as loyal subjects of King Richard. But don't thank me. This was not my fight. It was Bart's. Yes, it was Bart who took all the sore beatings and saved my life in the moat. You've trained hard these last months, and now you serve me in earnest. Goodbye, Sir Baldwin. Speed of lightning, bold and brave and gay. In justice, he is fighting to win.